Okay, what about all the way back? Yeah, and definitely more on this one. Okay. And right at the cock. Well, I'm like, yeah, right but it hurts like more down here. He's like, I can't really. Right, because like, there's nothing. He he's like, I done. can't do anything for you there. Like, <laughs> and that's right where it attaches on the bone. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they he's don't. Like, I can't. They don't like to go on the bone. Yeah. I All right, today we're evaluating an athlete who had a twisting injury of the ankle approximately one month ago. He has been to PT with um, limited success. So we're here today to look at it with imaging. Did x-rays, which is normal, and going to look at it with ultrasound. Now, there is some point tenderness in the ligaments of the ankle, but the actual pain that's giving her the most problems is starting uh, slightly above the cal calcaneus um, and the medial malleolus on the inside of the leg and traveling up. And so I've already felt some tender spots in here and it feels like um, it's partly the soleus and gas truck overlapping. And I'm um, gonna look at it with ultrasound to figure out what we see. Do we see anything uh, that could be more severe? So I'm just looking for fluid, I'm looking for vessels. You see right across the middle of the screen is the bone. I don't see any disruptions in the bone. Okay, take a pick right there. Okay, so starts here, right? Yeah. And how high does it go? Right there. It's still. Still there, yeah. Okay. So when we're trying to focus and get the exact spot of pain and injury, it takes a few different things. One is the patient tells us what they're feeling. Uh, the second is imaging, and we have x-rays, we have ultrasound, MRIs to do that. And then we have our hands, our physical exam. And it becomes extremely important as, as to uh, determining what we see on imaging with that. Uh, because, uh, for example, in this case, there's pain right, right along the bone here. And it's right as the attachment and syndesmosis are coming in. And it's not always that apparent on imaging. And I did look at it with ultrasound. And there's just small things that if there were no pain, then we probably may not have felt an injury. But since uh, we have pain to tenderness, and pretty pretty significant because she can't do any activity, that I would uh, call that abnormal on the ultrasound. And also uh, looking at um, the soleus and the gas trough when they come together. Um, normally, they should be nice and flush together. And where she's having her pinpoint pain and radiating pain, there's just some thickening there. And the fascial, fascial disruption is coming off that. So relying on your hands, knowledge of anatomy, and utilizing it in conjunction with um, our, what our patient is telling us and activity level, as well as imaging, is the most important thing. Now we're going to even further that by in injecting lidocaine right to these areas. And I'm going to have her be active. And I want to see the pain go away completely. And if it does, that tells us that's the point of injury. And then we re-inject it with some type of regenerative uh, material. And there's prolotherapy, there's PRP, then there's stem cell, which is amniotic tissue allograft, there's umbilical cord, there's bone marrow, there's adipose. All of these are very effective. Stem cell products are always the most effective. But that'll help to regenerate this tissue and get her back to training as soon as possible. Okay, so now this is our a lidocaine diagnostic test to um, go exactly to the point of pain and injury and look to resolve it afterward. And if so, then we go forward with a regenerative injection. Okay, feel that right there? Yeah. Okay, that's where we're going. On three. One, two, three. Hang in there. Okay, I'm going to the next one. You let me know if you need a break, okay? Okay. Here we go. On three, one, two, three. There 
Here's the next one on three. One, two, three. So these are tenon attachments in the syndesmosis, which is where um, connective tissue comes together between the, the tibia and the fibula. Here's the next one. Okay, so now we, we, I've identified on ultrasound an, an area between the soleus and the gastroc that is um, the fascia is torn off. So I'm going to go in with lidocaine under ultrasound guidance to put the uh, medicine directly there. And now afterward, we're going to retest her um, activity to see if that pain goes immediately away. Okay, Ali, on three. One, two, three. Is separating the fascia where, where the tear has been identified. Okay, that's it. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's been months of just excruciating pain. Is it 100% better? I would say so. Let me just like. Yeah, move all kinds of directions. Lateral. Go deep to you know just to yeah, let's see if I can squat. push it. Yeah, I'd say so. Perfect. Yeah, I can complain. Perfect. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Okay, so we just uh, did some testing and we just did some diagnostic lidocaine shots and Ali, could you tell us how long you've had the pain, what you've been through, and then after the lidocaine, how you felt? Yeah, so it's been almost probably closer to two months now um, training through pretty excruciating pain, um, not being able to do a lot of uh, jumping when I'm boxing, like not being able to you know, be on my toes. Um, I need plyometric training, um, running, almost everything caused a lot of pain like radiating pain uh once the lidocaine uh shots i it was almost i almost forgot what it was like to be able to move around and like not have that pain so yeah it's a, it's a great feeling <laughs> great and what that tells us in most muscle tendon and connective tissue and even joint disorders if we do a lidocaine shot as a test and the pain goes away immediately that tells us that is the source of pain and then we just need to do is some type of regenerative injection in order to regrow the tissue. And the, while the lidocaine is temporary, the regenerative injection is going to regrow tissue, and that's how she's going to feel after the tissue is regrown. And then it just depends on how quickly. Stem cells will regrow the most, most quickly and have the least recovery. And then if we do PRP or Prolo, it's going to be a longer uh, recovery and more inflammation with that. Okay, we've already numbed the areas up and we know where the injuries are. So now we're getting ready to inject and the type of regenerative injection we're doing today is amniotic tissue allograft by technical definition. And this has, it was cryopreserved in negative 80 degrees. We unthawed it and it's hard to kind of see, but there's very fine pieces of, of tissue in here, which allows the body to grow new tissue on top of it. So I see much better results with this product compared to every other Thing I've used and I've used bone marrow, I've used adipose, I've used fluids and PRP as well as pro. Okay, here we go, Allie. On three, one, two, three. Okay. So we've done different treatments with Allie, and one was PRP on the hip. And the other was amniotic allograft on the elbow. And we just did amniotic allograft uh, for the leg. Um, Ali, can you kind of tell people like your experience with the recovery and the procedure itself between the PRP versus the amniotic? Yeah, with the PRP, I definitely was out from training for a little bit longer. It took um, a little bit more time to be able to like go back to activity. Whereas with the stem cell, I feel like 
initially the recovery was a lot less and I was able to return to um, training and competing faster. Um, overall, the results that I got are basically, you know, the same thing. It's just a matter of, of time that, like, it took to get to those results because the PRP I had on my hip, like, I haven't had any problems with my hip since then. My elbow with the stem cell, I haven't had any problems um, since. And then hopefully the same for my ankle. Um, it's just a matter of how quickly you want to get back to play, I think. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. The procedure we just performed was amniotic tissue allograft for a syndesmosis injury as well as a fascial plane injury between the, the gastroc and the soleus. Now, I do expect this type of injury to heal very quickly with this type of treatment. Um, she's looking to go back into a ring and fight um, very, very soon. And I, I would expect her to be back to activity within a week and to progress as tolerated at that point. My experience with this type of injury is that um, people go back to full activity within one to two weeks when they're young, healthy, and especially uh, high-level athletes. And um, I expect minimal soreness. Um, the amniotic tissue allograft has a little bit of an inflammatory effect, but most of what is in there creates anti-inflammation. So I expect there to be quite a bit of um, healing happening within the first two days and then the activity happening following that.